All right, friends. So we are here for the last portion of our uh, workshop today. Sorry, I had a brain freeze of our workshop today. Just want to say thanks for coming out. I hope that you learned uh, quite a bit about the cloud, especially Microsoft Azure, the tools that it has, um, and then the things that we can do with it and, and how it can help a organization and business um, in so many, so many different ways. The last portion here, what we do is we go through these practice exams. Now, I will be giving you a link to these uh, tomorrow. So when I send out my email, I will give you a link to them. Uh, basically like, hey, here's what we did. This is a really great tool. Uh, we're not, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but it's a great tool on these. Um, my encouragement is, is as you guys are doing this, you do get a $50 uh, coupon from us. I would, if I were you, I would purchase these $12 practice exams. This is a list of 973 questions that are very similar to the exam, if not almost word for word. And so this is just something that you can do. It's got some really cool different uh, things that you can do with it. If you, yeah, so I am logged in. So let's say that I purchased this AZ900 and I take this test. What I can do is I can do the full test length, right? So if I want to do practice mode, that means I go through each question and then it tells me yes or no. And, and, you know, here's why. So if I do this practice mode and let's say I start test and I just click this guy, nope, it's not this because, you know, here's why that's incorrect. It's actually subscription. You need to create, have a subscription, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so it kind of walks through everything for 85 questions. Uh, I think this is a really cool tool. Again, $12 is not bad, but what's even cooler is that if you want to really study a topic, if there's something you're just not fully understanding, whether it's the core Azure services or privacy or understanding the Azure pricing, now this is just that uh, memory stuff that we kind of talked about this morning is, you know, that's why we don't go over it because it's just like a price, right? It's just memorization. Um, then you can actually study particular things in each different subject, which again, I think is a really, really neat and really cool thing. You also have an exam mode. Um, so if you don't want to initially know what you got right or wrong and you want to take it as a practice exam, you click this exam mode and this will just basically grade you at the end. It'll be really sort of emulate what it looks like and how it will feel whenever you do actually take the certification. We are going to do something much more simple. And we're just going to go through. These are 10 questions. And this is just, um, we're going to walk through these, see if we can answer them. And if not, what we really want to do is how can we figure these out? Now, some of this stuff we might not have talked about, right? We might not have talked about pricing and there might be something on pricing coming up. That's okay. We're going to kind of use our resources, see, make a best guess, and then see, you know, okay, at the end, whenever we see what, you know, what percentage we got right, then we can kind of walk in and see, maybe we can understand what's going on there. So, and then after this, we're going to do two of these. Um, and right now off, so these are 30% off. So I think it's like eight bucks. So I would go buy these. The 973 questions for eight bucks is pretty good. So let's try these. Uh, and then we're going to do these for the next 20 minutes. We'll talk about that and we will be done for today. Cool. Uh, so you guys can put this in the chat or feel free to really just put it in the chat or speak up. This is just a group collaborative effort here. Um, so this first one, so, go ahead. Before we get started, um, I've seen that you purchased basically all of them or basically you have all of them in relation yeah. from the, uh, the, the DP to the AZ to the AI. Are the mm -hmm. tests relatively significant and should basically, do you recommend also, like after you take all these courses, do you recommend basically buying each individually? Um, so I I like, I mean, they were $8 because I bought them on discount as well. $8, this is for our instructors and for us to train with. Um, and then these are some other ones that we will be doing in the future, the DP100 and the DA100. And so I would, if I were you, I mean, at the end of the day, you're getting... If you take all three, you get $150 off of $300, right? And so if you were, let's say you get certified in AZ 900, DP 900, and AI 900, right? Because you go to each one of those workshops, you get that certification, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, you will pay $8 per course. It does help. Um, obviously, you don't need them, especially the DP 900 and the AI 900 are not as robust as the AZ. The AZ, even if you just look at it from a Microsoft Learn platform, it's got like six massive sections compared to the DP, I think has four and each section is much smaller than each Azure or AZ 900 section. 
And so I really do like the practice exam for this guy. I would say you could probably get away with the DP and AI not really buying these practice exams, but for this AZ, because it's pretty robust, I would say that it's a great idea. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Cool. Uh, great. So let's dive into this. Uh, first question, let us suppose ABC Limited plans to migrate all of its data and resources to Azure. The company's migration plan states that only platform as a service, so pass, solutions must be used in Azure. Now you're required to deploy an Azure environment which supports the planned mi migration. Uh, does the solution, so solution, in this case, you create an Azure app service. Oh, is this telling me what it is? Oh, no. Oh, so here's the solution we come up with. Sorry about that. In this case, you create an Azure app service and Azure virtual machines that have Microsoft SQL Server installed. Does this solution meet the goal? Before we answer this, one thing to really, and the reason we kind of do this in this uh, workshop is to break down sort of the questions and the things that catch people on uh, off guard. It's something like this that states only platform as a service solutions must be used in Azure. There might be other solutions out there that are not platform as a service, maybe they're software as a service, right? And so there might be two answers that if this, uh, if this, doesn't it doesn't exist then both are correct right and so really reading the nuances of the question is really going to be the big thing so for this one the big kicker would tell me the company's migration plan states that only a platform as a service so okay does are these is app service and virtual machines that have microsoft sql server are those a platform as a service solution that would be it so for the people who did the azure app service and virtual machines what do we think Yes. Or anybody. Yes. Say yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a reason why? You just let's just do it. Fifty percent chance. My reason is because you can use both um, a SQL and a non no SQL database. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Cool. So this one says Peter is working in a company that plans to migrate its website to Azure. Okay. So another migration question. The website is being accessed worldwide by users for video streaming services. Peter has been asked to suggest a solution to provide reduced load times and higher transfer speeds. This is gonna be that big key, right? Higher transfer speeds. Which of the following Azure service should Peter suggest to meet the requirement? Anybody have any idea? I don't believe we talked really about either of these. So- Azure Content Delivery. Which one? Azure Content Delivery Network. Okay. Do you have a reason why or do you just think that one sounds great? Well, because of the, con I mean, they're looking to do video streaming services, so it's content, so it's sure. delivery. Cool. Great, great call. Is either that or load balancers? Yeah. Well, uh, if you really think about it, blob storage is more storage based, but it doesn't really sound anything about, but that's not going to really give you uh, high transfer speeds. The security okay. groups is basically breaking you down to your different, um, your IAMs or your individual uh, group permissions. Uh, load balancers is going to really help with the, uh, if you have uh, too many people going on and looking at uh, things, then it definitely, uh, looking at your videos, then it's going to definitely uh, help with that. Uh, Reduce with times. Reducing the times there, but that's only in limited edition. Or, uh, circumstances, uh, something that will reduce load times uh, and uh, give you high transfer speeds. It does sound like the content delivery network yeah. would be the best, just breaking it down like that. Yeah. Yeah. The other one I would have said would be load balancer. So yeah, I think, I think at the end of the day, Azure content uh, delivery network, let's go with that one. Cool. Number three, Peter is working in an organization that hosts its non-critical servers in Azure. He's asked to recommend a support plan that gives billing and subscription management support, Azure advisor access and Azure health status and notifications at the lowest possible cost. Which of the following support would Peter suggest in this case to meet the requirement? Now this idea of this guy, I don't, we didn't talk about these plans, is it's going to really come down to what are you, what are you wanting to do and which, which one provides that? Right. And so 
Here it says uh, lowest possible cost is kind of something that's probably going to throw people off because you might think, okay, well, the basic, right? That's the lowest possible cost, but that might not, so that might not uh, allow for subscription management for Azure advisor access and health status, right? That might be the premier. So regardless, in order to do all of this, right? You need the premier and that is the cheapest one, but that's because that's the only one that allows that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't believe it's Premier though. I was going to say Anybody? developer. I yeah, say I was say, that's what I was going to go with developer. We'll go with developer. Could be standard. Right. If you're working in a company that plans to migrate their application to Azure, this application will be responsible to host the banking records for its users. You've been asked to suggest a security information event management and security orchestration automated response solution. Which of the following service will meet the requirement? We did not talk about security in this thing. Anybody have a, a guess that you would think? Azure I mean, Security Center? Yeah, let's try that <laughs> That's on. what I would say, or, or Sentinel. Yeah. Or Sen Sentinel, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, it sounds like it's... Security Center. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, security, let's security I mean, at this point, it's breaking it down, right? See which one yep. is the most. Okay. David is working in an organization that plans to deploy several virtual machines that will host its business-critical application to Azure. David's been asked to suggest a solution to ensure that if a single data center fails, the application will not be affected. He suggests to deploy virtual machines with multiple resource groups with the same availability zone. Will the solution suggested by David meet the no. requirement? It won't because you're in the same availability zone. So if one, if a single data uh, center fails, which is an availability zone, then uh, you're, you know, it fails. You're not able to access it, or it will be affected. The application will be affected. I thought. Yeah, but, but I thought there would be multiple. Yeah. I thought there were multiple, and if one shut down, even yeah, if maybe they're in the same zone, that there's still another one there ready to still yeah. go. Yeah, wasn't that the point of availability zones? Is that if one goes down, the other ones are there to back it up and. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're on their own grid, right? They're not connected in any way, whether it's water, whether it's electricity, they're they're individualistic in that regard, for sure. But then, so I, do, think, but then yeah. I do remember that part where he did say like, like the East can, like maybe it goes down, maybe the West takes, takes, some, takes some of the data or that's mm -hmm. where I'm seeing maybe, yeah. It, I can could, I could see where uh, Lawrence was going. That's where we, that. that's what we call a region pair, right? So each one is paired with a region. And so it's at least 300 miles away. That's where the U.S. West and U.S. East comes in. So that's what we call a region pair to where you can back it up to, let's say there's a hurricane um, in yeah. the West, right? Which never happens, but let's say that happens. Or an earthquake. Um, earthquake. You can, you know, you can push all your stuff to the East. So what do we think? I would say yes. yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Definitely, that's right. Yeah. All right, question six. Jane is working in an organization that plans on storing 40 terabytes of data in Azure that, can, that they can query using either serverless, on-demand, or provisioned resources at a scale. Also, it is required that the stored data must be integrated and visualized using Microsoft Power BI for analytics. Which of the following Azure service would Jane suggest in this case scenario? Then ask. Synapse, yeah, Synapse I would know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your company has hundreds of servers hosted in their in their on premises on premise environment. The company plan to migrate some of the servers to an Azure pay as you go subscription. Which of the following expenditure model would you suggest in this case? So think about this uh, expenditure right. model. We want to do a Azure pay as you go. What do we think? Operating. Yeah, why? Because um, you need to make sure you have it budgeted because you're going to pay for it as you go and you're going to have a year to year, year over year budget to support that where capital is typically the start of the time. Yeah, capital is what you had whenever you did this on premise, right? It's like right. the buy in basically to have this with this operating expenditure. You're expecting this subscription that's not going to change month to month unless you you know, increase or use too much, but you're expecting this, but you're not having to, you know, if you come from like even a accounting background, you realize that when you have a server, you have to depreciate these items, right? And you have to deal with that from an accounting perspective. You don't have to do that with operating expenditure. Where'd it go? Okay. 
Let us suppose a company wants to try out some services that are being offered by Azure in public preview. In this case, should the company deploy resources which are part of public preview in their production environment? No exclamation mark. Exclam why? <laughs> well, it says public, so you're, you're basically providing accessibility to the general public and you definitely do not want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Unless, you, unless maybe you're a YouTuber or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> and you also, yeah, like let's see how quick I can get hacked. But also, right, like you don't want to deploy on a, on a uh, thing that you are trying out, right? In the sense of like a free trial, you're not going to deploy on that. So yeah, I would agree with no. Okay. You have the plans to deploy several Azure virtual machines. You're required to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available, even if a single data center fails. Solution, you suggest to deploy the virtual machines to two or more scale sets. Okay. Does this suggested solution meet the desired go goal? Yes or no? I'm gonna say no, because I don't understand what that means. Well, the scale sets are load balancing, so... Yeah, scale, scale sets, sets? Is, is a way that will allow you to basically quickly create a new virtual machine somewhere else. Yeah. Mm. Right, but would that be in the same... Yeah. Uh, data center, or would that be in a different one? If, what if it fails and everything? That doesn't make sense to me because if you have to create a new one, but what if it's gone already? How can you sure. create something? So how can you, create I, it? you, if you can uh, do it on in different data centers, then it would meet the goal. If it's sure. only in a single data center, then it would not. Okay, is that what you guys want to go with? So you are required to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available even if a single data center fails. But we still don't know if you can deploy the virtual uh, or the scale sets on more than one data center. It sounds like we're in doubt. So for the most part, so we're gonna, I think we should just go with no. Cool. Okay. Last one is, let us suppose you work for ABC Limited, which has several business units. Each business unit requires 20 different Azure resources for daily operation. All the business units require the same type of Azure resources. Now, you are required to suggest a solution to automate the creation of Azure resources. Which of the following would you suggest in that case? Would you have it as a virtual machine scale set, Azure resource manager templates, management groups, or Azure API management service? Resource manager templates. Okay. Because you're looking to replicate this multiple times. Perfect. All right. Now we need, I believe it is a 75% or 75% 70, to pass. So as long as we get an eight out of 10, we are good. And we'll be able to see which ones we got wrong and we cut, kind of talk about them. 100. We got oh. a six. Fail. Okay. So here it's number one. We said, yes, it meets the desired goal right? Where we talked about the Azure app service and virtual machines that have a Microsoft SQL server installed. It does not meet the goal. Anybody know why? It's a little rude that they made the text really small at the yeah. end where you're definitely supposed to read it, but yeah, that really wasn't, wasn't cool of them. My guess would be that, that I'm wondering if Azure app service comes in as a software as a service. Did, whoever read that, did they talk about that? Um, it is a PA, oh, it's a PAS service. It is a PAS. Okay, what about yeah. Azure Virtual Machines? Is that a platform as a service? That's an IAS. Oh, there it is. Oh. Uh, so the Virtual Machines is infrastructure as a service. And see, this is exactly what I was saying, right? Is this was going to be the guy that got us. Yeah. So now yeah. we know. That's okay. Now we know. And that's the reason why, I, you know, us kind of talking about this and seeing these little things, this is why we're doing it, right? This knowledge is great, but even just test taking, there is a skill to that as well. Cool. So wait, way to go, guys, uh, with the Peter and the company migrating with the video streaming. It is Azure Content Delivery Network. Way to go. I know that this was one that we kind of talked about in uh kind of in depth, but it was the content network delivery. Now we did say developer here. And that one we talked about standard or premier or basic. Um, at the end of the day, 
it was this guy right here, this lowest possible cost. And without us going through the cost and subscription models, right? Which we didn't do. That's that's just kind of something that, you know, as you are reading, that's something to kind of to memorize at, at the end of the day. It is the basic one. Um, that's okay. We didn't talk about that. Just realizing, you know, which, but it shows you that even knowing, okay, what type of plan provides what might be a possible exam question. So this one, Sentinel was uh, the one, the other one we thought it was, right? Yeah. Where you're working in a company that plans to migrate. So I'm going to count that because we would probably got like 50% of us would have said Sentinel and 50% of us would have said security center. So I'm going to say we got a seven out of 10. Uh, but it plans to migrate their application to Azure, be responsible for banking records. So it's Azure Sentinel. That is one of those. And again, that is in the security section, which we didn't go through today. So these were things that, you know, we at least broke it down and said, okay, why would it be this? Or Cycle Cloud didn't really sound like something we wanted. The security center did. Okay, so let's process through. Cool. So it was the Sentinel. Now, this one uh, talks about that plans to deploy several virtual machines that will host its business critical applications. David's been asked to suggest a solution to ensure that if a single data center fails, the application will not be affected. He suggests to deploy virtual machines to multiple resource groups with the same availability zone. Will the solution be suggested? We said, yes, it is, but it is not. And I believe it's because of the same availability zone. I said it wasn't. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. Eight out of 10 now. We... <laughs> Okay. Oh, because of Lawrence. We got that's the only one I was banking on that he'd be wrong. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh <laughs> yeah. So this one's the Synapse Analytics. We're doing a ton of data. Again, Synapse Analytics and HD Insight are two that are whatever if you're ever dealing with like big data, HD Insight and Synapse Analytics uh kind of two in the same, where they can handle massive amounts of data, like 40 terabytes of data, sort of thing. Old company has several hundred servers on premise. Which one do you go to? Again, operating expenditure. This one allows us to. Um, this one allows us to kind of prepare and plan for a pay as you go subscription. So where to go, guys? Again, this one's fairly simple. Do not go into production on something that's a public preview and b that you're trying out. So it kind of comes with it, right? Uh, you have plans to deploy. This one was something we did talk about, but we said, no, the solution does not meet the, the desired goal because we talked about this single data center fails, right? If the single data center fails, even if you can replicate quickly, you're replicating on a server, either the same server, or if you're trying to replicate, you know, within the same data center, either way, you're going to fail. So yeah, no, the solution does not meet it. You would want to come into your region pair, maybe like do a backup with your region pair, whatever that is. Um, but this isn't even an availability zone would probably come in more handy, right? If this was saying, you know, services are running on the virtual machines are available, you know, in, in an availability zone or something like that, then it would have worked, but this is a single data center that fails. Everything goes down regardless of if we can scale or not. And the last one we got right, let us suppose you work for ABC Limited, which has several business, business units. Each business requires 20 different Azure resources. At the end of the day, managing all those is the Azure Resource Manager templates. Cool. Way to go. Um, there were some harder things. I mean, to be fair, if you really think about it, the things that we got wrong were the things that we didn't go over in class, which is pretty awesome. The one thing, right, we had the oversight of the Azure, Azure Virtual Machines is an infrastructure as a service. That was our one oversight that we actually went over this stuff, dove in, that's okay. But everything else that we got wrong was a pricing or a security thing, which is pretty awesome if you think about it. And that means that what we took in and what we did really, really did help, except this one about the availability zone. That's it. So way to go. Uh, I'll give you guys the option. Would you guys like to do another 10 question test? Or would you guys like to just kind of, as I said, 3.30, uh, I can go into what the certification looks like. Um, now you can, obviously, these are, this this does not uh, cost anything. So these tests that I'm going to send you, I think there's like 93 questions you can go through that are, these are the free ones. If you wanted the exam, like I showed you, the ones on my cart, then you have to buy the premium access for 11.99, 30% off, things like eight bucks. But if you guys didn't want to do these on your own, there's like 93 questions that you can walk through and I'll be sending that 
as well for you. So do you guys want to do another one or do you want to just call it good? I'm done for another one. Well, well, I, I had a couple of questions. Is, sorry, but how many questions is the actual exam? Oh, yeah. Great question. Um, it's anywhere from 40 to 60, but usually it's about okay. 55. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody else? Well, I just had a couple of questions. Yeah. First question. I'm still a little confused as to um, what are, for the one question, what are scale sets? Yeah. So a scale set just allows you to basically copy and reproduce a virtual machine wicked quick. So, so if you have a virtual machine, right, and you are, maybe you have an application or you have something on that virtual machine that is running, right? If I want to scale, so there's, they're scaling horizontally and they're scaling vertically. Did you guys go over that in the morning? Yes. Yeah. 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 So if I, you can kind of think about it from like a horizontal perspective, right? Where we talked about how, if I want to do horizontal scaling, it's like, I'm, I'm basically creating another machine to sort of deal with that. What a scale set does is it allows us to instead of going and having to set up another machine that allows us to scale wicked fast and, and, and replicate that virtual machine over and over again. So you're still getting multiple virtual machines. It's just adding more of them in a more in a quicker manner. Yeah. So instead of me having to go in and then re-downloading and re kind of setting up a virtual machine to match the same requirements, a scale set will allow you to basically press copy and paste. Oh, uh, okay. Then, control C, control V just for yeah, the new mm -hmm. ones. Okay. Absolutely. Then my second question is, if you maybe only knew two of the answers out of these 10, um, is that bad? No, 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 no. These are things that are practice, right? I, I wouldn't expect you to come in and know all of this stuff if after doing a couple hours of a workshop, right? I would say that, again, the AZ900 is robust, but this is also the beginning, especially if you don't have any sort of background of cloud computing. There's a lot of stuff that we talked about, right? And so... Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. Just continue to study and that's okay. Right. Rewatch this workshop and walk, walk through the, the Microsoft learn material and you'll be just fine. All right, cool. Thanks. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress about that. Um, you will have, let's see. Yeah. What I'll do is, um, what I'll do is this, uh, we'll, we'll kind of wrap things up now and then I will, basically allow, you know, I'll just keep the zoom room open. So if somebody wants to walk through it, I'll put this in the chat and we can walk through another one. If you guys want to process through these. So I'll leave the zoom room open if you guys want to, and just assign somebody. So that way, if, for those of you that want to continue to process and walk through this stuff, you totally can. It's in the chat now, but I will walk through sort of the next steps here. Um, so the vouchers, it says expires November 15th. Let me actually check the number on that because I think we did just get brand new ones. And so I think they do have a different expiration date and that is just an oversight on my part. So um, what will happen is tomorrow you will be receiving an email from me as long as you put your name on that uh, pub, pub trivia file, you'll be receiving an email from me that basically says, hey, thank you so much for everything that you've done. Thank you for coming. And, and hanging out with us. Thank you for walking through this material. Here's everything we walked through. So it's going to be the, um, it's going to be the lecture slides. It's going to be the videos for today. It's going to be all that information. The practice practice test. Maybe you can't stay after with with those that want to go through a practice test. After this, that's okay. You can do them on your own if you want to purchase them. You totally can. They're like eight, thirty percent off, twelve bucks. I think it's like eight dollars. So you'll, you'll have all that information. And then uh, what you'll do is you'll also have a coupon code. Now I'm pulling that up right now to see exactly when they expire. Now you'll have, um, I believe they're more so, let me see. It says November 15th on the. Yeah, it says November 15th, but I just got brand new ones in. And so I think those do change. Okay. So they are February uh, 28th. So I'll actually change this for you guys whenever I send this out. February 28th. So you have February, February 28th. Um, that, is the, that is when your coupon code expires. And so I would encourage you guys, this, uh, this is something that you'll get a coupon code and you'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then you just don't, right? And so I would encourage you guys to even, um, 
w- one way to kind of assure that you will do this is set a date, give yourself some time, especially if you, you know, kind of were struggling and it's your first time with cloud computing, give yourself maybe a month, uh, depending, and obviously, you know, your schedule, if you're traveling in this next couple of weeks, right. Kind of plan with that, but, but actually set up a time to take the exam. You'll have the coupon code, but set up a time to take the exam, sign up for it because that I've always like with students, that is the one thing that will push them to really study the material. Because if we're being honest, um, humans are procrastinators. I am very guilty of doing that. And so I would say set up the exam um, like this week, set it up. You will get a $50 coupon. So it will cost you $50 to sign up. It's $100 total, but we give you 50% off of that. So I would say sign that, sign up, um, walk through that material and then have an actual day that you were going to take it. And I promise you that will push you to learn the material. If this is something that you really want to learn, I do think that this is a massive future of technology. I would really encourage you guys to get this done because also you'll have an understanding of cloud computing. What's really great about it is this idea of capital expenditure and operational expenditure is, is not, um, not just tied to Azure, it's with AWS, it's with GCP, which is Google Cloud. Um, any sort of cloud, right? Like there are so many massive companies and all this foundational stuff of disaster recovery and elasticity and scalability. All of these are true with other organizations. The differences are the applications and the things like the Cosmos DB that Azure provides. Those are what's different between an AWS and an Azure. But knowing this stuff will absolutely help you in the job market and it'll help you just in your understanding as a developer, right? And so I would schedule that. It is proctored. So that means that somebody will watch you. You will have to clear off your desk. It is pretty intense uh, from that perspective, but you know, they're not, it's not like super duper intense, uh, but you will probably have to clear off. You can't use, you know, uh, you'll, you'll have to like share your screens. You can't Google, you can't look up information that way. So it is a proper exam. And the, the reason that they do that is because um, is because that actually gives validity, right? If they were just like, hey, fill this out whenever you get a chance and then you're certified, that, that doesn't really mean anything. That's why you guys did a boot camp, A to learn, but then you get a certificate that gives validity to your knowledge, right? Versus somebody who is just like, oh, I just taught myself. And it's like, okay, well, how do you know what, you know, I don't know what you know. Here's like, no, they, you have validity of what you do. And that's the reason why this is proctored. And so there will be somebody, you will have 90 minutes for the exam, about 30 minutes of that. Um, or I would plan for 90 minutes. I'm sorry. 30 minutes of that is really kind of getting everything set up. If you have a paper, if you have anything that they don't like, then you can kind of adjust your, uh, you can adjust your desk to match that. But then it is a 60 minute exam. Again, it's about 55 questions. They say, I think it's e- between 40 and 60 questions, but typically it's around 55. Um, And so where you go, and I'll I'll also send you the link tomorrow with the coupon code, is you'll click this link and that will take you to uh, where you can sign up. You're going to sign up with Pearson. And that's, I'll put that in the email as well. You'll sign up with Pearson. um, And then at the end of that, you'll create an account with them. You'll set up a date. You'll set up the exam. And at the end, it'll ask you for a coupon code. So at the very end, when you go to pay, that's when you put in that coupon code that we have, the one that we give you that is unique to you. So if you give it to a friend and they use it, then you lost out on your coupon code transparently. So that is unique to you. Uh, so make sure you know you guys aren't trying to share the same coupon code. Um, and then I will send you a document from Microsoft as well, kind of breaking down how to totally get set up uh, for that. Any questions on this? Uh, Mark, yeah, a lot of companies are migrating over um, to Azure and AWS for sure. They are Azure uh, really touts they have the most data centers in the world of any company. Um, I think AWS still beats them out by a margin, uh, by a slim margin of customers, but both are massive, massive. Those are easily the two largest cloud computing companies, no doubt. Any other questions, my friends? Uh, Laura, I believe you do need a webcam to take the exam because they have to check your desk because it's proctored. So they have to make sure you don't have like notes or something that you're, you're going through. And then they, they do, uh, your camera has to be on. 
Any other questions, friends? Cool. Well, I will stop the recording here.